All right, what's going on, everybody? This is Peter Rennett back with another toy video for you guys. Hopefully, you are enjoying these as much as I'm enjoying doing them. Now, uh, speaking with my buddy Ben C, he convinced me that top fives aren't as cool as top tens, so I decided I'm changing this. We're doing top tens from now on, uh, as long as there's enough toys in the toy line for me to you know keep that up, and I don't think I should have a problem with that. So now, this is top ten toys, not top five. So hopefully, you like the change. I'll still throw a couple of honorable mentions in occasionally at the end uh, if, you know, if the toy line warrants. So again, I hopefully you guys enjoy this change and I'm just gonna keep it all in one video instead of splitting them and just keeping this nice and simple. And you can catch this both on my personal channel as well as here on Tales from the Flip Side. Uh, and you guys can uh, you know, get the video wherever you, you, know, you choose. Hopefully you like and subscribe to both channels because uh, I'm on both of them. So anyway, without further ado, now, if you've been watching the things that I've been doing lately, I can't help but be kind of infatuated with Star Wars again. So I've been doing Star Wars for, it feels like, weeks now. So this week's no different. So I'm doing Star Wars toys this week. I'd considered doing the Black Series because I've been uh, picking a lot of these up. If you follow my Instagram, you see I just got this uh, Thrawn in uh, today. And I really enjoyed the, the Six Inch Black Series. But that's not what I'm going to cover for this uh, first Star Wars toy run uh, for my Top 10 article. Uh, based off of the... Th mention of Thrawn on Mandalorian and the heat that Thrawn's been getting the last week or so. Uh, I recently filmed a video for the Star Wars uh, show, also on Tales, where we talk about Thrawn, and I was talking about the Thrawn toys, and in talking about those, it got me interested in, uh, yeah, into looking them. In particular, the combo pack, uh, the comic packs, I should say. The, those two packs where you get an actual Dark Horse comic included with the figures. Uh, there's a, a bunch of those out there. They ran over about like two years or so before it got discontinued. Uh, there's some exclusives that went to stores near the end, a couple of cons uh, exclusives as well. But there's a, a decent number of figures, maybe close to about 40 or so. And so I figured, let's take a look at those because some of those are really expensive these days. And I was thinking Thrawn being one of them. But to my surprise, even though when I decided to do this as my list, there was a $250 sale for that Thrawn 2-pack, mostly because that comic inside is also selling for about, you know, 100 bucks plus. Uh, I really thought, I was like, Thrawn's going to be at the top. Like, Thrawn's definitely going to be at the top. But you're going to be surprised once I hit this list. So again, hopefully you guys are liking and subscribing to the channels. And I'm just going to dive just right into this. So the again, as I mentioned, the, uh, the comic packs, you know, they had two figures in them. They were like the three and three quarter like size, the more the smaller guys, um, they came through and uh, again, they included a comic, but almost like the Toy Biz. Toy Biz also kind of, uh, and the Marvel Legends, the, the more recent, I shouldn't say Toy Biz, the more recent Marvel Legends, uh, they did kind of a similar thing with the uh, little Marvel figures as well. But uh, the Star Wars ones are the first ones I remember uh, doing that with the, with the comics and all that. But getting right into our list, surprisingly, the Thrawn 2-pack is number 10. Again, I thought that was going to be closer to the top of the list, but even with that $250 sale on uh, December 4th, this is still only averaging about uh, $93.66. Uh, that's covering about 18 sales. That's uh, what I did. I just ran through, basically ran through the eBay, uh, you know, eBay auction histories and uh, purchase histories, and you can see you know the number of sales. I found about 18 sales on it over the last three months because I think that's how far it goes back, and the average sale is only about $93, $93 which was surprising. Uh, I know it's a lot of it spiked recently because of the mention of Mandalorian, but I still thought a lot more people were buying the Thrawn before uh, before then. But no, yeah, it isn't the case. Even today, uh, December seventh, an auction ended earlier today at one hundred and seventy-two fifty with uh, twenty-two bids on it. So that one is definitely trending up. If I were to do this list in another couple of weeks, Thrawn might find himself higher. But for right now, he's number ten. And again, that comic is a strong selling point for this particular one because I know CGC nine eight of that book. Uh, I think it was the best offer, like a sixteen hundred dollar ask, but still, there's a lot of money going into Thrawn, Heir to the Empire one books, along, among other books, his mini, his regular mini series for Marvel. Uh, a lot of Thrawn selling lately, so keep an eye on this one. So even though it's number ten right now, it's trending up. So after Thrawn, we got to move on to another familiar character at number nine. Another one I thought would have been a little bit higher because it's an SDCC exclusive. This is a Darth Maul figure that also had all, um, Uncle Owen basically in with it. But that one's only averaging about ninety nine dollars, uh, ninety nine seventy two, and uh, I think there was a high sale about one hundred twenty five, one hundred twenty five dollars on that one, and uh, I think it was nine sales I tracked uh, in looking at that. So I thought that would be higher because you know everybody loves Darth Maul as well, and this was the pretty cool Darth Maul where he had the you know the more elaborate horn sticking out and the robotic legs. It is a pretty cool figure, but again, it found its way only at number nine. And uh, look, look at Uncle Owen there; he's got a got a blaster as well. 
Uh, there's also a comic in here, uh, Visionaries. Uh, I forget what this actually reprints, but it's a pretty cool cover. Uh, but I don't know uh, how well this one is actually selling on its own. It's really that Air of the Empire is like the big the big comic mover out of uh, these packs. Where, while many of these comics are you know desirable and people like to find them, including me, I always love finding uh, the toy comics and the toy packs from the, uh, the Marvel Legends to things like this, where you can just tell it's not for resales, either marked on it, or there's no barcode, or it's just a kind of a blank front, like as you can see uh, with many of these. I love picking these up because you can find these a lot of times in dollar bins. They're usually banged up, unfortunately, because they came with toys. And getting these damn comics out of those to those plastic toy packs without damaging them is is a chore. So uh, if you can find them in high grade, that's you know kudos to you. That's not an easy you know easy find. But uh, yeah, so it is what it is. So Maul ends up being our number nine. So we're just gonna keep rolling on. Gonna go with another Darth here at number eight. And this is a character, another one I think you should be keeping an eye on. And this is Darth Krayt. Uh, with this High Republic series coming, we may go back. Maybe we uh, see something where we tie into this, this Darth and some of the other Darths uh, along the line. Because these characters are our fan favorites. I know they're the villains. And villain spec usually isn't uh, a good play in most superhero cases. But in Star Wars, that's not the case. A lot of the biggest books these days are the villains. Because they are the most interesting characters in the universe, I gotta say. The Star Wars universe, uh, I should uh, specify. But yeah, that Darth Crate figure... Uh, they're also packaged with uh, Sigil Dare. I'm going to murder these names because I have no idea how to pronounce these properly. I'm just reading them as best I can, doing it phonetically if I can. But So feel free to correct me, laugh at me all you want. I'm just going to do my best in pronouncing these names. But that Darth Crate figure, that one is a big jump, uh, even though we're at number eight. We're hitting 161.60 average on that one with a high of 202.10. And so about 10 sales on that one. So it's still, you know, it moves. It's not uh, It's not super hard to find. You can find, you know, copies of it out there. So keep a lookout. Uh, that Darth Crate figure is pretty cool. So moving on, going to hit up number seven. And the comic for that one, oh, before we get to number seven, the comic of that one is a pretty cool uh, reprint for uh, Legacy. You can see you get that close up, a close up of that mask. And he's got the, the pretty cool, the Kate Bosworth mismatch that he's going. Uh, it's a pretty cool image, uh, that comic inside is, uh, you know, it says Star Wars Legacy 22, but I'm not sure if it actually reprints 22, because even though they number these books that way, it's not exactly a one-for-one -one, uh, reprint. And you'll see, uh, I think, a little bit later, where uh, it's like a Star Wars uh, Tales of the Jedi, but then they just call it Star Wars. So it's not usually a one-for-one -one, uh, reprint in all cases. So that's what also makes these books a little bit more interesting. But again, this one, cool cover. I would grab it if I could find this on its own, too. But uh, that was our number eight. We're going to roll on to number seven to try to keep this video moving. And uh, here we got a clone trooper pack. This is the clone trooper lieutenant and a clone trooper. Uh, you can see this one here is uh, has the red the red packs. Like I, like I said earlier, uh, basically there was two runs of these figures. There was the earlier run, which uh, started with the blue. I think those might have been 2008. And then 2009, they came back with the, uh, the, red, the red packaging. And then I think by 2010, they just kind of wrapped up and uh, went to some Entertainment Earth exclusives, which we'll see a little bit uh, later on in this list. And uh, so, yeah, it, it's pretty cool to find that here. And uh, just also to throw out there, just in the middle of uh, doing our run, some figures within this run also found their way into both of these series. So you might find a blue version as well as a red version. And uh, with those, most of them sell pretty, you know, pretty consistently with themselves, but... Uh, it's kind of interesting to find that uh, there's a blue version, you know, the early version and a version two where they reprinted the, the character. I think there was a Luke figure like that. And I know there was a, a one or two more where that it actually hit both, both runs. So just something to keep an eye out for. See if you do have it, which one you got, do you have the first edition or the second volume uh, edition? Again, pricing is still kind of all over the place. Those ones don't come up a lot uh, in comparison. You can't really tell. They don't really list them that way, uh, as far as I can tell. So I don't know if there's a big demand for one or the other in uh, those multiple figure cases uh, that I'm aware of. But uh, if you know more than me, please feel free. Drop it in the comments. Let us all know. Uh, share the information. Uh, I'm by no means an expert. I'm just an enthusiast, and I just love talking about toys. So sorry to hold up and not give our clone troopers the respect that they deserve at uh, our number seven spot here. But those guys, that package is selling at about uh, $223 on average, and that had a high sale of about $310, which is, uh, you know, we're starting to get pretty uh, pretty steep in these prices. I mean, these are a little figure two packs, and uh, they are selling uh, selling pretty well. And uh, it's not all just based on Mandalorian spec. As much as I love that show and it's driving a lot of these comic book sales, it's not all due to that. These are things that collectors have collected for some time now, and uh, 
I may just be becoming more aware of them personally, but this stuff has been selling for years and uh, yeah, just something you should keep an eye on, especially if you can find them. Yeah, even loose, some of these figures loose also do well. I'm not doing any of this pricing based on loose because it's so hard to uh, figure with these. You have, it's a two pack for one, so you may not get both figures you know, in the two pack. And then you have weapons, you have the comic. Where do you draw the line of all these prices? I can't give you prices for everything. We'll be here all night. So I'm just giving you the prices for the sealed packages of these two packs, but just be aware in some cases, some of these figures sell almost as much as the two packs on their own loose. Okay. That's it. Clone Troopers number seven. Again, pretty cool. Uh, pretty cool comic on this one as well. Uh, looks like a, you know, clone trooper focused, uh, book, um, uh, Star Wars. I don't even know the number of, uh, that issue, but yeah, it's pretty cool. So we're just going to move on now to number six, just so we don't, uh, yeah drag our feet too much along this list. So this is a pr pretty cool character, uh, I think from the Legacy series. This is Jariel and Roland Dyer. I don't know if again, if I'm saying the names properly, but at number six, these this pair rolls in at about, what are we looking at? 229.37 with a high sale of about 249.99. So about 250 high. Uh, but considering the average at 229, that, that high, it means it's pretty consistently you know at that price. And uh, that one, this was one of the ones that ended up being uh, an Entertainment Earth exclusive at the end. So this was a late run issue that just kind of dropped over after the series line got basically got canceled. I think the Entertainment Earth basically got the last few uh, figures that they had made and yeah, they got to release them. So some of these figures are here near the end of the run, which is, makes them a little bit harder to find, which is why the prices are so much higher. But again, $229, $229 is a, it's a solid price. And again, that average is pretty consistent with the high. So Pretty cool character. Who knows if we'll see her drop anywhere, but I think it was from Legacy. It's also a pretty cool comic. Yeah, there. Actually, it's a Knights of Old Republic comic. I'm sorry if I was saying Legacy. It's a coder. So, again, that's a great comic series, too. We, John Jackson Miller, who wrote that entire run, he was a fantastic guest. We had him on Monty uh, about a week ago now. Uh, if you haven't seen that video, please go check that out. He he lays it all down, a, a lot of information. He also owns and runs Comic Ron, a, a, a Great dude, fantastic, fantastic time uh, talking with him. So, Knights of the Old Republic was a great series. If you don't have those books, get which ones you can now because some of those are getting pretty, pretty tough to come by. So, let's move on to our top five then. So, this is where our other video would have started. And you would not have even heard about those last five. I couldn't have even talked about them on if I was only doing a top five. But... Since we're doing top 10, I get to hit some more. So our number five is Delilah Blue and Darth Nile. Yeah, so another Darth hits the list. Uh, they chose the reprint. Uh, this looks like uh, Star Wars Legacy number seven. It's one of the Hughes covers. Uh, it's pretty cool. But prices on these are about $257.28 as the average with a high of about $360 on this one. That's pretty high. You gotta figure for this tiny little two-pack. Again, they're tiny little figures. But hey, these things aren't easy to come by. This was also an Entertainment Earth uh, release. So again, it's not easy to find. And you have a Darth character that's, you know, one of those ones you could see. I mean, right there and that Legacy run, which is another reason why I want I like Star Wars Legacy One so much. Is I mean, you got Crate, you got Nile, you got Talon in there. It's just Multiple darts give you multiple bites at that uh, proverbial apple to uh, you know get spikes and, and get hits uh, if you're looking to make money. But just from a collector standpoint alone, you get to have you know all these firsts and uh, early appearances. So it's a pretty cool cover. Like I said, this is a Hughes uh, for that number seven. It's Luke. Pretty cool. Uh, can't complain there. So we're gonna roll on from our number five to our number four, which is oh man, I'm gonna have a hard time with this one. Uh, our number four is Tira Sal and Thome. And in this, you got Star and you, you know, in Star Wars Republic 65, the comic in it. This is, uh, again, one of those late run ones, I think. So this is $387.45 as the average. Almost $400 with a high of $420. Granted, this is only four sales over the last uh, three months, but still, there's not a lot of these out there for you to have. So these prices are high, but... This ain't easy to find. You can see this is the, the red series. So this is the that second run. Like I said, I, this must be one of the later issue ones near the end of that run where they just production line just lessened lessened until they you know basically canceled the line uh prematurely, uh, I would say. But uh because there's still demand for them. 
there's definitely still demand for them. So that was our number four. And like I said, Star Wars Republic 83 is a, why does it say 65? I'm sorry. I might've jumped to the wrong comic here. Oh, I jumped ahead. I jumped ahead. That's my mistake. Star Wars Republic 65, Mace Windu. Uh, it looks like you got Kit Fisto on there as well. Uh, a pretty cool cover. And so I just kind of stumbled over myself and previewed our number three pick, which is another clone trooper pack. But this is a clone trooper with a clone commander in the pack. And this one, they got the kind of camo gear. They kind of look like the scout uh, bike troopers, at least one of them is. And uh, this sells for a $400 average with a high of uh, about $500. Granted, for this one, there was only two sales, but you figure to average $400, you had basically a $300 sale and a $500 sale. So it's still a pretty tough figure to find, and it's not cheap. So clone troopers don't think that it's, oh, it's a throwaway just because they're, you know, they're the cannon fodder. Now, some in some cases, the cannon fodder figures are the tough ones because people aren't as attached to them because they are considered filler. Like the kid doesn't want to go to the store to pick out the uh, you know the extra guys. They want the hero. They want the villain. They want the big names. They want the the you know the unique looks, not the standard trooper. But these are the ones that become tough to find because they don't get sold as well. So moving on from that, again, you, as I said, the comic book here is a uh, Republic eighty three. Pretty cool. But we're going to move on to number two, which for this one, this most recent episode of Mandalorian also really got me settled. This is also the figure that made me really decide to do this toy line as my pick for this week is this Jaster Mareel and Montrose figure. Because Jaster was mentioned when uh, Boba, you know, punched the button to say, hey, look at my history. Jaster, you know, he basically took in Jango Fett, trained him. So he's his almost adoptive grandfatherish of sorts. I don't know. It's really weird considering he's a clone and talking foundlings. It, it's a convoluted history, but it's an interesting one. So with this one, you get that pretty cool Open Seasons book. I think that's the cover. That's issue two in there. But I'd also keep an eye out for the actual book, uh, Open Seasons one, uh, as well as three and four. I mean, it's, it's a great series. I'd get them all if you could. But this figure is really really cool. I really wish I would have that. I could have this one. Another Entertainment Earth exclusive, but. It's just out of my price range. This one's averaging $434.94 with a high of $639.99. I can't afford that personally. It's just crazy expensive. And that's over eight sales. So it's not a ton of sales, but it's also not just two. Like there, this, this figure sells when it's out there. You can look them up now uh, and you see the prices are up there. It's not a cheap figure, cheap comic pack, whatever you want to call it. I don't know what the comic on its own does, but like I said, it's a pretty cool open seasons book. You get that, uh, you know, pretty awesome. You got the two Mandalorians there. It, it's a pretty cool cover. I got to imagine, given the rarity of this figure, that the comic book is rare as well. Just throwing that out there. But just keep an eye out for both if you can find them. It's pretty awesome. But so that's going to take us to our number one. And our number one, which, again, I'm going to brutalize these names. Uh, Ulick Quell Droma. And uh, XR Kuhn is our number one. This, I believe, is one of the last uh, figures that came out in the stores uh, right before they went to you know, exclusives. So I think that's the reason why this one is so so expensive. Again, a $490 average, $490.60 is the average with a $650 high sale. It's crazy, crazy, this little comic two-pack, $650. And again, that's seven sales as well. So it's... It's not a tiny amount. It's not just two. It's not just one sale. It's not a, you know, a weird, out of the norm, you know, uh, one off. You can say this. You can say these prices can. It gives you a solid average. So nearly five hundred dollars for this two pack is a uh, nothing to sneeze at. And uh, as I was mentioning before, for this one, you can look these up. Either of these two figures loose can get you about two hundred bucks each loose. So it's it's definitely something to keep an eye on because these aren't very familiar characters these are kind of characters that the you know the regular folk who won't, don't love star wars won't know so they'll just find these toys and just throw them in piles and bins so if they have open figures that they've gotten you can check yard sales you know garage sales flea markets who knows you can find these loose figures and uh, you know, make yourself a few bucks because 200 dollars each is pretty solid for a little you know loose three and three quarter figure but that was our list uh I think it's pretty cool. These two packs. I wish I had more. I got the Thrawn on the way uh, for myself because I just couldn't resist. And uh, I don't know. Hopefully I find more of these. But 
they're not cheap. Uh, there's tons of good ones that didn't make the top 10. As I mentioned, the Luke, there's some Vaders. There's a lot of cool stuff in this line with these two packs. But And a lot of them will sell, you know, for a close to 100 bucks, like for the two packs. But they just didn't quite make it to, uh, you know, to the list. But, yeah, that's it. That's our top 10. Uh, I do have two more honorable mentions. So if you just want to stick around for a couple more minutes, I'm going to hit those up really quickly. And uh, the first honorable mention, as I said, nearly making the list nearly making the list and uh i mentioned her name before darth talon so you got darth talon with uh kate skywalker coming in as one of our honorable mentions these average about 85 dollars with a high of about 133 uh these sell this one sells a lot there's 28 sales on this so this this piece moves because darth talon is a figure i'm sure if she were to make in a screen appearance would just set you know collecting world on fire people would just love just the look of this character uh and just It'll just blow up. But, you know, who knows? I don't know where they're going with this Star Wars universe, what characters we're going to see, which ones we're not. We got new comic series coming. We don't know what they're going to touch on. It's all exciting to me. I can't stop buying any of this stuff. Like, I'm buying toys. I'm buying comics. I just can't get enough Star Wars, personally. Sorry. Next week, I promise, I'll do something else. But this week, I'm still going to be uh, representing my Star Wars love. So that's our first honorable mention. Again, this hits up that Legacy series. You can see the comic in this one is that Legacy 2, another Adam Hughes cover. Yeah, it's pretty cool. If you can find those legacy comics, I believe Hughes did the first you know, handful of issues. I think he did six out of the first seven issues. I don't remember what it was like four or five. He didn't do the cover, but fantastic covers and uh, just fantastic books. Again, a lot of cool characters uh, introduced in that legacy series. And that also ran for about 50 issues. So try to get that entire run too, because who knows what's coming you know, down the line. So I got one more honorable mention for you guys. Uh, I just thought this one was a little bit fun. I know we've done all two packs up to this point, but this one is actually a three pack. This is Machuk, Kilo Keech, and Ketch. Three Ewoks. You get Star Wars issue 94 in it. This is a Walmart exclusive. So this one is also, I think, you know, not as easy to find, but still, you know, there's, there's numbers out there. I mean, a dozen sales. This is $84 average about, $118 high sale on the, these three guys, and you get three of them. Yeah, pretty cool. Grant, you know, Star Wars 94, that looks like, a, you know, one of those old Ewoks comics. It's a little... uh bright with that pink, but still pretty fun. I mean, how can you not love an Ewok just standing there posing with that uh, Stormtrooper hel helmet underfoot? So, hopefully you enjoyed those last two. It was just a little fun. I just wanted to throw a little extra there on the top 10 list. So, again, hopefully you enjoyed this list. I enjoy doing these and looking at this stuff because I'm interested. I'm trying to buy what I can, but a lot of this stuff I can't afford. I mean, you look at some of these prices, I can't be throwing $500 down on a little package figure. I, it's just not in my budget not with uh, all the other habits and collectible things that I like to get. So it's just kind of fun to look at, kind of fun to review. Please like, subscribe to the channel. As I said, hit up the comments. Tell me some toy series you want to see. I've been given a great list, you know, to hit down the line from, you know, visionaries, muscles, battle beasts, tons of stuff that I want to be able to do classic, as well as hit some of the new stuff. Uh, you know, if I start seeing some interest in the, uh, you know, the McFarlane DC figures, uh, some of those start moving on the secondary market because, uh, that's kind of what I want to show you. I want to show you what's moving and the prices just so you can be aware. So if you see some of this stuff out there and what you might actually even have in your own collection to be like, I had no idea. I had this Thundercats figure because I love, you know, Lion-O, but now I can see what, uh, what the value is in that thing. So hopefully you enjoy these videos. I enjoy doing them. And uh, like I said, just keep this uh, collecting hobby fun because uh, it is. It's toys, man. All right. Cheers.